We out of red in England. All the boy, yeah, you know it's hype train FC. Modern ambition, we got blue and gold in our kit. Plus, you know we the champs of the league. And we don't quit. Started from rest, who's scared of sport? We ain't taking it light. You know it's real. From fantasy to the field, you better believe that hype. Yeah, yeah. Hello one and all, my name is Robert Austin and a very warm welcome indeed to the Hype Train FC YouTube channel for the ninth edition of our podcast. Today we're going to go and attack a subject and it's a number that everybody loves, number nine. Everybody loves a goal scorer in a football team and today we're on the attack of our own. We're going to be talking about a very left field subject for football, I know, but we're going to be targeting scammers and spam for football clubs. The purpose of today is that we're going to be going through a presentation and this is the second presentation in a series on our podcast. The first we tackled a few weeks ago on episode 5 where I sat down for a couple of hours with a presentation that goes through what it takes to be a manager or a coach or a volunteer on day one running a football club. We go into what it takes to run a basic training session, how to organise finances, how to communicate with players and learning from my own personal mistakes or um, it's not never a mistake. It's never a mistake. It's learning about how to tailor from your experiences so that you as an individual are constantly growing in your role at grassroots level. And that's kind of what the presentation is about. If you haven't seen it before, I've linked the video below. It's got a link to our Kofi store, which has the presentation in full and for free for everybody to view and download as well as today's presentation as well on scamming and scammers there's another link that i've also put down below as well that takes you straight to a free resource that you can distribute to your football clubs or you as a club individual involved in the background can keep to distribute to your volunteers as well so you can understand some of the key markers for scams and spam and how to best tackle it at your football club so let's get straight into it and let's talk about scams So, one way or another, you'll be following at home. If you have downloaded the Kofi asset from the link below, that's fantastic. If not, it's not the end of the world. Because we're a YouTube podcast, I do have it on the screen for us as well so that everybody can follow along. And I'll be in a little box at the corner providing my own insight. So today we are going to be talking about how to identify scam and spam within a grassroots football context. Largely, this is an issue that crosses borders between football and real life. This is a societal issue, as well as being an issue that targets any type of business, any type of individual, where people are basically trying to extort you or your precious funds, especially at a charity or a community football club level, of your precious resources. And that is largely what I want to avoid today. So this is an open age podcast that I'm hoping will demonstrate some of the key factors that we can really attack. So what would we like to achieve? We want to help clubs and individuals spot the danger signs when dealing with suspicious emails and messages. I will be providing some context as we're going through some of these bullet points. And the main reason why I wanted to do this podcast today was that when I started the football team up in 2019, we had so much spam, so much scam coming through to us from all types of the world. It doesn't matter where the location is. There's somebody out there with some type of fake email address trying to basically um, either infiltrate your website. They're trying to infiltrate your social media. They're trying to get your club bank account details, just any type of phishing scam or anything where they're trying to sell you fake or um, reproduce goods from a factory that exploits labor. There's millions of examples of scam out there. And over the course of four years, I have deliberately kept a lot of these um, emails or messages direct to our social media accounts because some of them are absolutely hysterical and I thought it would be a very good platform that for us to go through on a podcast later down the line I know how perceptive so that we can kind of tackle these one by one because honest to god some people don't understand the markers there are people that might not understand computers or messaging or have the direct connection with social media um, such as somebody as myself who's 32 and I kind of have a good grasp on that's a scam that's real okay we need to delete block and report that so this is kind of where the basis of the whole podcast come about and it's to protect football clubs it's to protect individuals and it's to protect everybody within our little grassroots football community as well so the next point is we're also looking to achieve that um, to ensure that scams and spam don't get previous funds stolen from them as well I've already covered that 
as well as highlighting some of the key examples of when a company or a person is legitimate or illegitimate as well. So we're going to go through absolutely loads today that covers all the basics of what is scam, what is spam, who are they, everything in between as well. And also, we're going to provide a good overview of how clubs and individuals can best protect themselves in a rising world of scam artists. Um, if you do online banking or telephone banking, you can't do anything now without some type of notification about a fraud check. You have to tick a box to say, I understand if you send money anywhere that this isn't scam, that you understand the risks involved. Um, I did speak to a member of Barclays to do with our football club account, and they told me that most of the resources at Barclays nowadays for community accounts and personal accounts are used to help to protect people from the rising world of crypto, the rising world of scams and spam that try to come in to try to infiltrate and to take people's hard-earned money. So what makes me as an individual qualified to talk about the issue? If you do not know me, my name is Rob Austin. I am the owner. I run Hype Train FC. Um, and as part of my duties and care for the football club, I do run all of the club's social media accounts. I run our multiple websites at hypetrainfc.com and thehypetrain.co.uk. And I also run all of our associated email addresses as well for Hype Train FC. And on top of that, I'm also a committee member and I run and have made the website for the East Berkshire Football League, the EBFL, as well as maintaining some of their email inboxes as well. So I have first-hand knowledge and first-hand sight of all of the types of messages and emails and correspondence that I get and the league gets. It's all very similar. It's all kind of ni nicely knitted in a bow for me to go through today. Also, I am the person that's responsible for purchasing all of the equipment and the um, kit that the club needs to operate as well. So while I've got an understanding of the manufacturing process and kind of how you get from point A to B. If you're a football club and in the photo here, I'm wearing one of our new goalkeeper tops. How do I find the football tops? How do I get it embroidered? Who do I go to? What do I do? There are some key points here because the last thing you want to do is speak to somebody that can offer you a great and exceptional deal on something such as a football kit and then they either under deliver or they're just there to take your money as well. So I've kind of understood that supply chain over the last few years as well. I also oversee every asset of my club's administration bar the finances. I have my brother Sam, my club chairman, who goes through all of the finances for the football club, though largely I'm in control of the bank account when it comes to purchasing um, any football kit, any footballs or any equipment such as medical kit, liability insurances for the county FA or anything that football clubs largely need to buy. So there's kind of a process where, you know, you just understand over periods of time what is real, what is legitimate. But if not, we'll cover all of that as well. Um, <clears throat> the next point is I run into spam and scam attempts all the time and can help you spot the key danger signs. We'll cover that in the next couple of slides. But after four or five years, it's really, really, really important that you can distinguish what is a legitimate email and what is spam as well. Also, I do work outside of doing football. I spend about 40 hours a week running my football club, but I do have a long background now working in pensions. So I have a lot of training to do with scams and identification and safeguarding vulnerable people from scammers and spam as well. Because this isn't, as I mentioned earlier, a football issue. This is an issue that transcends across society. This is somewhere where everybody's attacking normal people, normal individuals and charities across the board from all angles. Um, so we have to best safeguard ourselves. And safeguarding is a word I'm probably going to say a lot. It's just a natural word when you're talking about this subject matter as well. But I've got a lot of insight in professional training about how to spot the danger signs as well. Let's get into the meat of the matter and talk about the first topic, which is what type of scam or spam do people in football clubs receive? So let's just run through the bullet points one by one, and I'll hopefully flesh some of this out as we go along as well. The first point is people receive emails and private messages on social media accounts. If you have run a football club for a long period of time, you'll understand what I'm talking about. If not, you'll get message requests, you'll get follow requests, 
um, if you have it on private or you'll start being followed by different type of manufacturers or people that are trying to follow you on social media that are just there to message you out of the blue as well. You may also receive unexpected phone calls from scammers as well. In any type of life or walk of life nowadays, I tend to pick up the phone or i kind of learning not to do that now. If I receive a random number um, from a... I live in Reading down south. I'll occasionally receive a phone call from an 0129 number that's usually listed in the UK from Manchester or Leeds. There's no particular reason why anybody from a company up there would be contacting me. So I'll let it ring out. If it's super important, people will send you a voicemail. They'll send you a legitimate email. Don't be afraid to not answer phones to scammers. Though, if somebody is there on the telephone trying to get your details or any type of personal information, be it bank details, be it your uh, mother's maiden name or any type of security questions that can help fishers or scammers take your information, then just don't bother. Just it, It's always best to be on the safe side of it and just say no every single time as well. So um, the third type of scam that you receive is supposed businesses offering cheap and affordable football kit, training wear, footballs, equipment and more. This is specific to grassroots football. Um, the majority of the cases that we're going to go through today are from manufacturers from God knows where, if they're even legitimate, where they're basically trying to sell you their products. They will spam you with messages. They'll follow up with you. They'll constantly badger you and harass you online until you reply. And if you do reply, they then have you. And then you can just and then they just constantly keep messaging you. The best thing to do is just to block them, of course, as well. Number four, the designers are offering to provide a new and better crest or social media graphics for your football club. There are some legitimate businesses out there that you can vet and um, a lot of people that are very good with social media or graphic design as well, though there's a large chunk of people that will offer an online service for a small fee. They'll have some type of templated graphics up and they'll promise you the world. Be very careful when you approach people like this because there's no guarantee, especially when you don't know their name or their username or just anything about them as well. They don't have a website or anything to do with that. There's nothing worse than dealing with people that aren't legitimate. They don't have a proper business as well. And I've had it a few times where people will reach out and say, do you want to update your club crest? Do you want to update all of your graphics? And every single time the answer should be no, unless there's unless there's unequivocally an amount of legitimacy behind it as well. Next up, you get SEO experts. Um, so search engine optimization experts who want to rebuild your website or put you on Google's front page as well. I have run two websites. We do our fantasy football side on the hypetrain.co.uk and then we promote everything about our football club and we house everything to do with the players on our football team website, hypetrainfc.com. We get the same type of emails across both, which are from people that promise us that they're going to get us onto Google's first page, that there are mis uh, that there are words misspelt on our website, and they want to do an SEO overview as well. They try to offer you packages um, to improve your rank online. I mean, there are legitimate companies that do offers this. Um, Though, again, they will never reach out directly to you. They're never going to be the ones to spam you across social media as well. And lastly, you can be impersonated online by a scammer who is out to get your sensitive information as well. Um, about three years ago, um, I will give an example of the Hype Train brand itself. There was an online store that was on Instagram that had randomly found our um, our crest, our YouTube um, uh, yeah, just anything to do with our logo. They had put on the gold and the blue in particular. It was the exact badge. So they found it online. They had put it up on their own Instagram account and they randomly started having this shop online that was selling um, shoes, um, be it Air Jordans, really fancy Adidas shoes or anything in between. It was more to do with like American sneaker culture. And uh, I messaged them saying, look, come on, um, get rid of this, take this down. The way that scammers work and operate is that they're always defensive. They never do anything wrong. They want you to prove everything on your end. They want you to supply information. This is all part of a well-contrived tactic for them to try to secure information out of you, even though they're just phishing and scamming other people as well. 
I was getting some messages online from people who were telling me, Rob, um, I've just made this purchase. Can you provide me more information? And the this of a fake online store um, had closed down within days because the brand was clearly a scam. And there were people sending PayPal payments for, um, you know, for trainers, high end trainers um, across. And then, um, you know, I couldn't help them because, you know, it's nothing to do with me. I told this brand to not only change their name, but get rid of all the logos as well. Um, and yeah, so it's just, it was a really bad thing that a few people went through where a few hundred pounds of their money went down the drain. Um, and then they're messaging me saying, Oh God, can you help? And I, well, what can you do? Um, you know, the first thing and the only thing that you can say is go to your bank, um, go to anybody where you, wherever you house your money, just go to there and they'll be able to solve it for you as well. But there are people that do impersonate online, um, be it a fake name. Um, you know, we, there can be a case of a player having their account profile hacked as well. So anybody can impersonate anybody on the internet. So you just have to be due diligent with that process as well. So there are some common signs of scam and spammers or sp <laughs> spam and scammers. Oh my God, I'm getting off to a wild one today um, with my grammar. So there are a lot of spelling mistakes and poor grammar used. If they send you an email or a message, you're never going to get a completely perfect 100% articulate or grammatical email. You're usually going to get some chunked up text and misspelled words. The English will be poor. It's going to hint to signs that the person sending this message is outside of the UK, if you are a UK-based football team as well. Um, so we're going to go into a lot of those examples as well. So this is more of the oversight and the overview. Next up, the email or message was unexpected. Rule number one in when I'm working in pensions um, or even if it's to do with my football is that companies that are legitimate will never reach out directly and start spamming you with messages that are unexpected. Um, startup companies might promote on social media. They might reach out to certain football clubs asking if they want to sell certain products. And that is a whole different kettle of fish, but largely if you've received an email, you've gotten a phone call, you've received a text message from somebody selling you something or somebody trying to get your personal information, this is a very, very big red flag that it's a bit of scam. It's somebody sending you spam and that you should report and block immediately. Um, mainly, mainly, mainly because the real businesses do not do this. They send out email marketing but they're reliant due to GDPR for you to input your email. Let's say you've, um, let's say you're on the mailing list for a shopping website, um, a clothing store, a clothing brand, um, or anything. You have to be the ones to reach out to put your details in. You have to sign <clears throat> um, your rights that you want to receive marketing communications. You're never going to receive spam email from people that are looking to sell you anything. So that's probably the most important thing. So. Third up, scammers employ a suspicious sense of urgency to trick people into acting immediately. This is a notorious scamming technique across the board. Um, in my personal line, um, I've had this quite a lot with the football team where people will sell, say to me, oh, um, this is urgent. You can get X amount off of your football kit for 20 days, for 10 days, for five days. Um, however, quick, the process can be, um, yeah, they'll try to expedite money out of you as quickly as possible. They'll sell you a dream. Let's say, for example, uh, so behind me, I've got um, some of our new um, kit locker football kits. And I'll tell you now, they don't take one minute to deliver because you're dealing with a company that has back orders. They deal with customer service on a day to day basis. They then have to do all of the printing and the embroidery as well. And it isn't a one minute process. And a lot of these scammers online will promise you, oh, we're going to get you X amount of the same jerseys with the exact same quality, but we're going to do it for nine tenths of the price. And it's going to be super cheap. Instead of 20 pounds for a football shirt or 30, it's going to be one pound. And we're going to sell and we're going to get this out to you as quickly as possible. That people will try to rush you into making your brain completely out of mold. They're going to make you try to second guess yourself. 
And also because of like the thrill of the sale that normal salesmen use as well, these people go online and basically say, look, if you can get this done to me in 10 minutes or one day, then, you know, then, then we'll get that out to you. And it's, and then they go quiet on you. They will block you. They'll say, Oh no, there's an error. We need to send over more money. Um, so that there's always more after the initial contact, um, especially in my line at pensions as well. Um, when you go through, screening processes normal companies will make you go through long inundated screening if you've ever called up your bank you go through the same thing as well it's all security checks to make sure that you are legitimate so when people do receive phone calls um you know they will try to get them to hand over their personal details and try to sign over any type of rights that they can to try to infiltrate um you know their assets so that they can just take it. It's, it's honestly, it's honestly out of order how much I see of it. But yeah, they just try to rush. They just try to rush, 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 rush. So the best thing is in a, I'm going to show you an example of a legitimate email and the tone that is different from normal scammers as well, because a normal business doesn't me force you to buy, buy, buy now, now, now. We're not on a CVC channel in America where um, you've got like some diamond on sale and they're trying to force it through now. And there's that sales technique where they're talking for 55 years and they're doing it at the speed of light. So, yeah, that doesn't happen in the real world and especially in the football sense as well. Ordering good products takes absolute time. And I can attest to that because we've had a Nike kit locker store now for five years. Um, and there can be times when it takes quite a while to get your apparel because it's all done legitimately proper invoicing, proper customer service, um, proper quality control and quality checks as well. This isn't something that can take one day um, usually, especially when you're dealing with high volumes of information or high volumes of products as well, such as 30 football kits or um, if you want to buy more, even more, or training gear or anything. It just doesn't happen. So the next point is using generic salutations. Legitimate businesses will often refer to you by name. Scammers will use generic wording such as dear customer, hi, and hello. So basically, I'm not going to go too much into this because we're going to go through a series of examples that just demonstrates and highlights this as well. But if you're with a company or you're under the email marketing preferences of somebody that's sending you promotional offers on an email, they will refer to you directly by your name because you've offered that information up as well. Whereas somebody that is reaching out um, is doing it as part of a spam or a scam technique is basically copy and pasting it in. So they're going to use generic terms to bulk message and spam every single person that they can using whatever techniques they can as well. So it's very easy to spot purely based on the first line as well. Next up, attachments of products slash services slash links are attached that are shady. In a football sense, a lot of product attachments to football kits or equipment are typically generic as well. Um, one thing I would say in all of my time of running a football team, you never get you never get receive an email from a legitimate company with a ton of attachments unless they say what they're going to be. So, for example, um, the process of ordering a football kit, we've ordered from uh, Kit Locker our entire time. And basically, when I make an order, they will send me through an invoice or they'll send me through um, a, a, an original bill if I'm making like a power up order, which is where there is a bespoke kit. Um, we have a white kit that I'll put on the screen now, and we've got an orange kit, a red kit, a green kit, and we've got two traditional blue kits that are available on a club store to buy um, as well. And basically, um, as part of that process, the only email attachments we ever get might be the artwork, it might be um, a legitimate invoice, but these are all uh, transactional based on um, the actual purchases, the actual safe pay getting through the whole process with an actual customer service team as well. Um, and largely what you'll get from scams and spam is that they're going to basically attach some images or some videos or just anything that they can basically try to attract you to say, my product is legitimate. Look at this cheap plastic football. This means that I'm a legitimate business. This is genuinely what they do. And it's so crystal clear. And we're going to go, and again, we're going to go through that in some of our examples as well. 
Lastly, the final bullet point that we're going to go through is you will be up to supply sensitive and personal information, be it bank details, family and pet names, your address, etc., etc., etc. The main point, and I've highlighted the word never, companies never ask you for this information, particularly at the buying stage as well. They do not do it. This is against every type of um, consumer and customer law. It's against employment law by these companies. These They're not allowed to do it. There's very particular rules of GDPR that restrict the information that um, companies can hold and what they can maintain before and after a sale as well. So you just need to be assured that companies that are legitimate are never, ever, ever going to ask you for these bank details, particularly before you've purchased anything as well. Um, just to round out this last point, the final slide is um, some golden rules. And we're going to go over some rules to follow that kind of link in with this particular spreadsheet as well. And it covers basically the do's and don'ts when you're doing scammers. But largely, these are the I did a lot of research online about the definite signs of scam and spam that you receive as well. And through my professional training, and this is pretty much a condensed version of it. You just need to be very careful of wording, mistakes, grammar, the fact that they're looking out for sensitive information as well. So there are some additional scam red flags as well. And these are more based on my experiences. Um, so what you will often find and receive is that the spammer will send you a barrage of multiple messages, even if you haven't replied as well. It goes back to my point that companies that are legitimate will never reach out to you um, to buy their products online. They'll put out some ads online. That's perfectly fine but they're not going to spam and barrage you with lots of messages um, continuously over the span of years, which is what we'll go through in some of our examples as well. It just doesn't happen. Next up, any media or company logos, names are poor in quality and design, or the names can often lack in imagination as well to trick you into a full sense of security. Um, when we go through my apologies. Some of the examples of the scam that are on offer, some of the names are just going to make you laugh. Some of the graphic design and the quality is just awful. As somebody that's been um, self-taught a graphic design for 15, 16, 17 years, some of the efforts are basically day one, just pulled from Google. They've just searched a, a random name or they've just added text over something. None of this is ever a good sign. So I would say look out on top of the wording for all of the bad grammar and all the mistakes that we've covered in the previous slide as well. If they provide an image, if the image is usually low quality, low res, low rendered, with a really weird name as well, that's also an additional red flag as well. So the third point is in the UK, so this is UK specific, our club experiences is of overseas scammers offering a great value service for a football kit or equipment. This is around 90% of the scam or the spam that I receive into all types of our inbox um, because Facebook um, and Instagram are owned by the company Meta. I usually manage all of our Instagram and Facebook messages through the Meta messaging app. And most of them, I would say nine out of 10 are to do with offering you bespoke services for football kit or apparel. And <laughs> they're all very similar. That's kind of why I've collated a lot of examples that we're going to go through in a minute as well, though they none of them are legitimate at all. So point one, I would just block every single one of them. Um, and finally, they send an email with generic information and they lack proper credentials, such as they lack a business email. They don't have a professional email signature. Sometimes their name won't be there. They don't write in a formal and professional way as well. So we're going to go into some examples of that, but this is kind of just covers the the additional side of things that um, happens when you go through a lot of the scam, the spam that you get as well. And hopefully through some of our examples, we'll be able to identify some really key factors. Now that I've covered what are some of the key markers for scams and receiving spam into any type of social media or inbox or call for your football team, let's get into some of the examples. So this is the perfect opportunity if you haven't already to download the Kofi presentation purely because you'll be able to zoom in on some of the text and the wording. 
Um, because we're airing this on YouTube, if you're watching this on a mobile phone, some of the points here just in the first couple of slides might be a little bit small. Um, but not to worry, I'm going to read them out point by point so that you at home as well, if you're just listening or not watching, can have a full understanding as well. So we're going to basically go through three on this first page that um, made me chuckle. I've added some of the best ones in as well so that everybody can kind of understand. So bottom left corner, there's an email or a message that went to our Instagram account um, our, at hypetrainfc.com. Um, sorry, at hypetrainfc, um, beg my pardon, um, from a company called Act Vigor International, though they have just labeled it as INTL. They sent one message that just said hi, and then a second message. We are manufacturer and supplier of all kinds of sportswear, gym apparel, streetwear, activewear, casual wear, comma, new line, MMA and boxing wear. And the A isn't an, uh, sorry, the uh, and isn't an and. They're always the um, and symbol as well. Boxing wear, basketball, baseball, volleyball, ice hockey, and soccer uniforms are very affordable prices. Um, to note and to put some context in, some of the names for the sports are capitalized and others are not. Um, next line, fourth line in, we have been making products for different brands for the last 20 years. No full stop. If you have any inquiry, please don't hesitate um, and send email or inquiry on below contact. They then list their, uh, They then list a WhatsApp number and a different contact number, um, which will show you pl the plus 971 area code and the plus 92 as well. Um, you can go away and find out where that is. I don't want to do it. Um, and then they send you a message link to a WhatsApp me request as well. They then provide an email address um, at gmail.com and provide an Instagram account handled as well, as well as a company website is. And then they put the website, then regards the name of the individual at the bottom as well. Malik Azaz Scammer. So. <laughs> some of these um so first and foremost they wouldn't send more than first of all there's multiple messages there's just one message that says hi there's some glaring issues with this already they aren't using proper grammar as we discussed um he has but a name whether or not it's real it's definitely not based on all of this um you wouldn't ever be asked to divert to a whatsapp or a contact email for a sale that never happens um, never go to a third party source as well, um, because this is just their opportunity to take your personal information, such as your telephone number. Um, the grammar is absolutely awful. They put a new line after casual wear and then go straight into MMA and boxing wear. They do not finish some sentences with full stops. Um, they also don't use um, the correct grammar when they're separating an Instagram handle as well. And at the bottom, company website is, and then there's literally whoever words anything like that. Um, and then regards. Um, I've never seen somebody put regards in a business email either um, in all of my years. It doesn't seem to be something that somebody would do. It's always kind regards or if you want to be less formal, best, comma. Um, also, on top of that, everything's not broken up. It's all just one big block text as well. This is 100% verified scam and spam into an inbox as well so let's move on to the second piece of scam today which is from grand wears sadad uh, sorry grand wears sadad at the top hi we can supply you all kinds of gloves hand sewn soccer balls soccer kits t-shirts polo shirts tracksuit hoodies school and hospital uniform all garments and football products in reasonable then a new line price full stop we are entrusted to work together respect and encourage one another in love and that is all good i look forward to your favorable response favorable is spelled incorrectly for a uk individual have a nice day exclamation mark then there's about nine or ten lines of contact information from grand soccer sports um, the name at the top is completely different from the message sent to the individual as well um, it's then got the name of the individual. The, he's split himself as a managing director. He spelt the country Pakistan all in capitals, but separated it by um, by a space in between to make you sure to know where it's from. Again, they provided a WhatsApp 
link, a another personal telephone number, um, and a, and an actual email as well. And again, sometimes this one is actually at some um, called at groundwares.com. Even if you have a professional email business, anyone can do this. You don't have to um, spend a lot of money making an email account that's professional. You just sometimes need um, three pounds a month. That's what I do it through Wix, which is our website supplier for hypetrainfc.com. Um, and that's literally, you don't need, so again, I would still be very skeptical based on this email that the email isn't correct as well. Um, he's then provided a personal email account at yahoo.com as well as a URL as well. Um, I didn't have enough time or patience as well because the it was about three or four more messages with this. But then he randomly starts listing out all of the prices. He's put soccer kit, 6.8 and then a space and then the dollar sign. But he's labeled it all backwards. He's put the dollar sign at the end, 14.5, 11.5, 2.2 vest what does vest mean um this again is certified spam it's just poorly worded um some words are capitalized some are not there's spaces to be uh, that are put in between the lines um if somebody says they're untrusted online like this they're typically not um so yeah it's just again it's just a ridiculous um email also a giant block of information for you to be able to reach out to an individual so that you can be involved in their phishing scam as well. It's just, yeah, this is certified spam. Also, um, if I can overlay this with the image itself from Grand Wares, the logo itself is of a really cheap brand of a football kit as well. This is also another additional red flag that I mentioned of spam as well. So certified spam, um, and after this, I blocked and deleted the person, of course. Next up, the final one on the first page is from a sock supplier. So people that make um, grip socks. And on three different instances, I received messages. The first was on the 10th of May, 2023. The second was on the 16th of August, 2023. And the third was on Tuesday. For the record of the podcast today... The date is Tuesday, the 26th of September. So they, so there are roughly a month or a little bit more over between the state of the messages that I'm receiving. So this is somebody that is sending out repeated scam and spam um, and I'm not reciprocating. Largely, I've left this in there for the sake of the podcast that we can understand another technique as well. This is a, a, a typical case of harassment. So I'll read it out for you, bottom right. Hey guys, are you looking for any kits or team wear for the upcoming season? If you send over your club logo and colour scheme, we can send you some designs for kits and tracksuits for you to look through. That was it. That was the entire message. There was no information, no personalisation, um, nothing to suggest that they are legitimate as well. So between the 10th of May and August the 16th, I heard nothing back and then they decided to reach out again. Hi there. Does your team require any sportswear for the new season? We are we are a personalised teamwear specialist brand based in East London and would like to help you out. We are offering free mock-up designs for any of our items, including match kits, tracksuits, jackets and many more. All you need to do is send over your club logo and colour scheme. Again, it's another email, slightly tailored from above. What the first point was, was the generic salutations as well. Um... The first two are very generic. Hey guys, hi there. There's no personalization. There's no name associated. There's no email address. There's no company information. There's literally nothing at all here to suggest that it's real. Also, the use of the language as well is um, off as well. The grammar is slightly better in this one, and you can tell that they've got a better grasp of the English language, though the amount of exclamation marks as well is unprofessional. Um, and just why would you need to send over your club logo and color scheme? Also, Instagram is the worst place to send over your club logo because normal clubs are supposed to have a PNG logo where the background is cut out, so it's not a white background or a colored background and that you can move an image freely about and your logo isn't 
um, defined by the color behind it and you can overlay it very easily onto an image why would you send over a club logo and a color scheme over instagram as well it's just none of it makes like logistical sense as well and then from the 16th of august to tuesday which would have been the 24th or a week ago roughly about the 17th um just another random email uh, a message would you be interested <laughs> i mean they're not even trying then these they're not trying. They're just putting out random messages to see if you're going to bite. This is, again, certified spam. There's no product information. There's nothing. Um, they're just trying to bait. They're trying to fish. They're trying to see what's out there, if anybody is out there as well. Um, uh, this account in particular, I'm not going to name, though they do actually have a few people out there that have posted football kits from them, um, though Again, I don't know if it's legitimate. There's a bit of shadiness. There could be Photoshop involved um, as well. But typically, if they're reaching out to you day by day, month by month, asking for all this information, it's certified spam. You need to avoid it. Um, also, why on earth would you want to deal with somebody that is sending you repeated messages as well? Um, you don't want to deal with somebody that's harassing you like this because these are the types of people in life that at any moment could just turn around and be an absolute ass to you or your family or, um, uh, you know, just anyone. They could, you know, people like this that are treating you like this and speaking to you like this, they're not going to be good to you when they're having a bad moment as well. So all three of these are just certified spam. There's just ridiculous. Um, and this is kind of like an overview about the the majority of the supplier um messages that i get and these are all from either facebook or instagram as well so what we're going to go through is some of the indicators of an example here um, of another email or another message that we received on the 28th of august 2023 and i've just bit put some of the indicators that this isn't genuine so first and foremost what i'm going to do is read out the actual spam as well <clears throat> so hi there let me start over because I always like to say that this is from a, another scammer called Five Bro Sport. That's a legitimate name if I've ever heard one. Um, so, hi there. No comma, no separation. We are custom sportswear manufacturer of uniform shirts, backpack, tracksuit, ACT, dot, dot, dot. Please note the prices. Uniform price, $17, but the dollar sign is the wrong way around. Backpack price, 21 Shirt price, 8 Hoodie price, 18 Socks nine polo shirt 10 tracksuit 38 reversible uniform 27 basketball package in 90 dm me for more info thank you for your time so let's go through some of the indicators that this isn't genuine and this should be clearly marked for you on your screens now the poor grammar is evident across the entire message the entire email um, there's no comma after hi there um, there's no separation. The port, the grammar is ridiculous in the first um, paragraph as well. Um, there's a general lack of customer service skills as well. Again, this was done on the fly really, really quickly to ensure that people in um, that are doing this can just spam a thousand people with a hundred messages in one or two minutes as well. So those customer service skills are non-existent. Um, it's also an unexpected message and email as well. This was, again, apologies, a unprompted message that we received out of the blue was a message request um, that was naturally filtered into our inbox just for the sake of the podcast as well. But we didn't reach out to them. This is just a company that is just trying to scam and spam you online. Um, also, there's no name. There's no website. There's no email address. Generally, the eye test just proves that this looks shady. The, the, the wording and the pricing structure is just none of it makes sense. Also, a legitimate company would have a company catalog on a company website with a company ID um, and a business like number or something that would associate them with being legitimate as well. But there's nothing here to even suggest that as well. Um, and also, um, the name of the company, Five Bro Sport, is 100% fake. There's no chance that this is real. Um, also, it's all in caps, the company name as well. This is another surefire way of identifying scam or spam as well. If anybody on their social media account 
first of all, has a uh, account that's all in caps. That's annoying as anything. Second of all, this is something that scammers do to try to make the words pop and to make everything go, whoa, look at that. Look at the name. Look at this. Also, the logo as well. I know that it's not hard. It's going to be difficult for a lot of you to see. But basically, it's just some random green with a B under it. Um, and then it says 5 Bro Sport underneath it as well. Certified scam, if I've ever seen one before as well. Um, uh, on top of that, if this account provided any links, don't click it. Also, don't provide any personal details as well. The big thing is, if anybody provides, such as in the previous screen here, with a WhatsApp link or an email address, do not click it. it. You would be... Sometimes scammers just need you to open an email for them to win. And, you know, that's kind of where you need to be very careful as well. So just make sure that you don't click anything. Um, and if you do, you get out of there immediately. You delete and spam and report all of these people that are sending these types of messages as well. But again, this is example number four. This is certified spam. So next up, we've got a, another couple of emails as well. Um, another couple of messages that came to us this time from Facebook. Um, and we're going to go from left to right. The first one is from a company called <laughs> XAM Sports. The sports line is un um, the S isn't capitalized. Then there's the registered trademark logo manufacture company. The logo, before I even get into it, just looks like some generic bog standard black logo with an embossed um, and an embroidered um, logo to make it stick out to look 3D. Again, certified spam if I've ever seen it in my life. Um, and this one goes into slightly different elements. Again, we're going to open up with a generic salutation. Hello, we are an internally registered manufacturer. Sorry, I'll start that again. We are an internationally registered manufacturer. It's, it's getting my whole brain mixed up because I'm reading so many weird words. If you're interested to buy premium quality production, please visit our website or, or our page. We do specialize in printing, sub, uh, sublimation and embroidery, custom logo design, tag card and label, shipping through DHL, UPS and FedEx. <laughs> then they've got a list of the website, which is .com.pk, which is Pakistan. And again, they've got another link to a WhatsApp as well, which will be there to fish for your information. It ends with thank you for your attention. This this one is just all over the shop. We've got um, we've got um, capitalized words under premium quality production visit website. Um, there's no structure to any of the next words about how it's delivered. It's got another generic salutation. It doesn't provide a name. Um, and it's got a website address, but my God, I would never click that in a million years. Um, this, again, is certified spam. There's no images. There's no proper legitimacy behind this as well. Um, there's no personalization. This is 100% certified spam of spam. So let's move on to the one on the right, which is it's got an even worse logo. This time it's from a company called Z Apparel. And it's got a generic Z and an A, which just looks like some typical word that you can get on Microsoft Word um, <clears throat> with some type of clouded background in. It looks goddamn awful, to be honest with you. There's nothing worse in graphic design whenever I see a logo and it's got either a gradient as a background, um, a really harsh gradient um, or just something ridiculous like the stars or the moon or anything like that. It just looks cheesy. And this has that as well. It's got some really weird cloud lining on it. And again, you just wouldn't have that. And legitimate businesses now, they just keep the logo simple. They just don't overcomplicate things. They don't put things out that look shady. Um, so let me just read out this one for you. We are manufacturer and supplier of fitness wares, gym wear, sports wear, fashion wear, street wear, polo dance wear, soccer uniforms, American football uniforms, netball uniforms, basketball uniforms. <coughs> Apologies, there's so many uniforms here that I'm running out of breath and I'm losing my voice. Baseball uniforms, sports shoes, leggings, sports bra, uh, singular, tracksuit, hoodies, backpack, jackets, coat, t-shirts, sport, uh, shorts, gloves, caps, 
with very good quality and very acceptable price. So please give us a chance to work with you. Thank you. Oh, I'm just going to take a second to to not completely stress out over how bad the grammar is on this particular bit of spam. This is um, <clears throat> when I grew up when I was 16 and when everybody had, I'm 32 and I come from an era of everybody after school would run online and go on MSN and speak with all of their friends on Messenger all day. There'll be different groups going on and everybody's English was so bad. The start of every word would be capitalized and this is just that. And then there are some words that <clears throat> aren't even capitalized as well. There's no greeting. There's no salutation to even go over. They're, they're not offering anything. They've just said thank you. The Z apparel, the A isn't even capitalized. This is just, this is probably the worst one yet because they haven't even tried. They've just listed a load of different type of wares that you can buy from a store and then just said, oh, I've given up. Thank you. That's it. Done. And they've sent it out. Um, I'm, I'd be so interested as a topic to reach out and actually have one of these guys on the podcast to talk about if anybody's ever fallen for it. Um, just to, to, just to understand what they go through. I know that it's a dark world, but I, I'm interested to know, you know, what, what on earth is going on, you know, from the other side of the fence, if this actually works, because if anybody has fallen for this particular bit of scam, I would be very surprised, but I hope to God anybody hasn't. Um, <laughs> But yeah, this this one made this one's making my uh, my eyes all teary. So let's swiftly move on because we've got about eight slides of these to go through. We're going to mix it up though. Now we're going to go over to a another type of spam that you get. This one is an email spam. So this time there's a little bit more information off the bat as well that there are some very similar indicators that this again is spam. Um, so our email address and if any new football players or any sponsors for the podcast want to reach out our email is listed there contact at the hype train.co.uk i'm always willing to speak to people wink 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 um and yeah somebody had sent this through it came through to our main inbox this came through on thursday the 12th of january um so somebody on a wintry day in jan reached out this lady called garima patba um with a gmail email account reached out to me um, with the subject line of our email inbox um, and she started the email saying why is seo important to business and she opened it up um with the <laughs> with the alligator mouths and the full stop as well and then she put hello contact at the hype train.co.uk so she put the email address in and then put and then she put that as a link. Um, I hope that your business is flying in sky. I visited your website. It is an amazing design for customers. Are you ready for Christmas and New Year sales? Get your website on Google first page. Are you interested? Please let me know. First of all, let's, let's rip a band-aid off. January the 12th. And they're sending me that. Christmas is just gone. It's well gone. New Year sales. Hey. You got hit. If they're going to spam this to me, they got to spam it to me way before Christmas, not January twelfth. Unless I'm one of those people in life that unfortunately plan for Christmas like a year ahead. Um, I understand buying a wrapping paper when it's on sale, but anything else is a bit too crazy for me. And uh, but yeah, honest to God, um, this is a typical email that you get from an SEO business that is looking to scam you, trying to. Um, facilitate as much information out of your football club as humanly possible um, the image in question is of a woman in her late mid to late 20s um, to try to attract men males to respond to her as well as part of the scam or the grift um, the name there must be somebody out there called this but i'm not buying the name one bit at all um, there's no um, if we're going to go through the email from top to bottom, what on earth is going on with the first line? That's just ridiculous. Why is SEO important to business? She hasn't explained that. Um, second of all, hello, contract, contact at the hype train at code UK. So she has put some personalization in, but everything else is so ridiculous. Also, we're not a business. We're a community football club. Um, we run 
a free of charge football website for people to read some weekly fantasy football updates. So first of all, not a business. Um, we used to be registered as one, um, though we uh, dissolved that a long time ago. And um, yeah, this is just none of this makes sense to me. None of this should make sense to you at home either. This should just highlight how bad an email is. If we're going to go through some of the key indicators um, at the beginning as well, there's no attempt at all to be um, to show any type of customer service skills. There is no um, contact information to a legitimate website. There is no information at all regarding an email signature. It's got a Gmail email account, which is always bad for business. This is always a number one sign for me that you're running through scam. So if you are a legitimate business, by the way, please, for the love of all things holy, get yourself a professional email account. It will make the world of difference. Um, one of my friends at Reading Tigers has started up a business and I've said to him, look, before you get your website live, get your professional email done. It just helps. Um, you know, it just can just it can transform it um, as well. So. All of this is just ridiculous as well. The capitalization of random words, the am I flying high in the sky? I mean, what on earth is this email trying to achieve? Um, and yeah, so um, there's just one other point I want to bring up. Um, I started this, I started a MISC email folder for spam. And within the space of four months, I'd received 117 pieces of spam and I was kind of going through and picking and cherry picking what I wanted to put into the podcast. And honestly, I could have put that we could have gone through 50, 60, 70 ridiculous emails today, um, though I've decided to cherry pick just a couple. But again, this is certified spam. <clears throat> if you ever receive an email like this, click the report button, block the sender. There's a good chance they're going to send another email, um, be it through this person or somebody else. As soon as they've got wind of an email address that might respond to them they will just harass you um, be it in your spam folder or your regular folder with all of this type of flying in the sky nonsense which is um, you as a club just don't have time for as well so moving swiftly on to number five um, we're going to start with the right hand side as well we're going to turn the script on it a little bit and go into a really small one um I found this quite funny because I, again, I received this at the end of August um, and I received this through um, Instagram and we just got a random email or a message, sorry, that just said, what is your phone number? And this came through to the EBFL's Instagram account, just to be very clear. Um, no attempt at all to get in contact to say who they are. Um, it's from an account called Sport Artist with some random logo i can't even make it out it just does it doesn't look good either way but just what is your phone number literally nothing nothing else again this is certified spam you should never be giving out your personal details online the ebfl has a very good email structure they've got emails for all of their registered committee members and i built them a professional website as well so that there's all of the contained email links as well so if a, if a football league ever receives this type of an email or an individual never ever give them out your telephone number as well the name kind of gives it away what it's going to be about sports artist they're going to be trying to sell you some type of graphic design package or um, some type of football apparel it's just so crystal clear um, again, rule of thumb, delete, block, report. That's literally it. Um, and then let's go on to the left because we're going to get into now when people start adding in photos. And this is just um, a ridiculous email because they've sent, from what I can see, from Austin Int, it's supposed to be international, has sent over six or seven emails to me and I've only covered in one print screen half of the screen. Um, so let me read it out for the viewers at home if you're just following along and listening. Um, the, <clears throat> the account is O-S-H-I-N-I-N-T and they've said, hi there, there's one message and then a comma. Hi there, new uh, message. Are you looking for customized sports kits and casual wear vendors? I don't even know what that means in context of vendors and casual wear. I mean, they, do they mean manufacturers, suppliers, vendors? Vendors isn't a word you ever use in the UK. Um, we are producing customized sports kits 
and casual wears for many brands in the USA, UK, and Australia, etc., etc., etc. So they're targeting deliberate. Um, so they're targeting English-speaking countries predominantly that all have fast associations with sport. Sports kits in a new message. Number one, sports kits. <laughs> Soccer kits, £10.62. Rugby kits, £13.75. American football kits, £17.50. Basketball kits, £11.20. If you have any query, let us know. And then they've put in the same message again. They've just copied and pasted the sports kits. And then what they've done after that is they've decided to paste all of the images of their kits in. For the sake of the example on the podcast, I haven't put them in, but that this was half of the message they sent one two three four five six seven messages across to me um and seven or eight more with images of the kit and all the apparel this is just again outright certified spam they sent this on the 8th of november 2022 so this is a little bit of an older case as well but again we've already covered some of it there's no the generic salutation at the top there's no information there's just a random image of some generic football kit they've not got any of the grammar correct they have reached out unprompted they have no grasp of the english language they've copy and pasted information they're harassing you in messages Um, and this again went to the ebfl account as well which is a football league that um and i'll be honest the ebfl Um, and all of these social media accounts that the leagues run the Reading Sunday League has the same issue they get spammed so much by these kit manufacturers because they think oh this is a football league that has access to 50 or 60 football teams or more or less and um, this is an opportunity for me to flog my gear onto everybody else and well even if it's real it's not let's be real Um, and yeah they just spam everything onto you straight away and the amount of emails in the request that I have, uh, the the spam folder, I think we're up to nearly two or 300 for the EBFL Instagram account. All similar accounts here from defunct rubbish companies that aren't real, that are just trying to make you buy into their spam. And yeah, so that's another good example. So this is what the league goes for as well. Um, then we're going to go on to another example, um, kind of a different example here. This is one where football clubs are targeted or general content creators as well. Um, it's all to do with growing your Instagram followers, your TikTok followers, any type of social media followers here as well. This again came into the Hype Trains email. Um, again, any sponsors that want to reach out, you know it. It's in the description below. Um, so yeah, we have a, another title here so the email subject header is hype train hq which is our main football website's instagram account get more for instagram followers and tiktok followers here that's the subject line then it's come from a ariabel abril 136 at gmail.com it's another it's another malarkey gmail email account so again a lot of these all have the same pattern they're not legitimate emails they're all from personalized emails Um, this one actually has a personalization hi the hype train we are from in insta social we found your email address on your instagram page hype train hq we offer instagram followers likes and views services the price is 29 us dollars for 1000 instagram followers and 9 us dollars for instagram post likes now you have 194 followers maybe you are interested will uh, <clears throat> with having thousands of followers you can increase your credibility on instagram also if you are running an instagram account to promote your own business having followers will get you more clients you can see the packages here and then it's gone to a html link as well um, which looks completely dodgy um, and then it ends with if you have any questions feel free to ask them here i apologize if this message bothers you also, we have YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter services too. Please check it now. Thank you. Regards. Um, the bottom of the email actually had the lady's name, Abrielle, but that was literally it. It just said her name. And this is just... So let me just go through 
first of all, again, we'll just cover the markers. There's a Gmail email account. There's no email signature. The personalization is for our business or the Instagram account, which is fine. Um, <clears throat> the company name looks dodgy. The service of offering followers is also illegitimate as well, and it's illegal. Um, you're not supposed to do it. Um, they've sent us a quote in US dollars um, for both of them as well. The grammar is poor. They got the number of followers wrong. Um, they're asking us questions. They're trying to push a service onto us. Um, the Again, the grammar to end is poor. They've got the line separated. Um, and then at the end, they've also got a PS. Oh, we also have YouTube, TikTok and Twitter services too. Please check it out now. They've also put in a dodgy link as well, a hyperlink to a different website, Social Stream 77, even though they've said the company name is Insta Social. That in itself is enough of a red flag to say that this isn't a legitimate company or a business. Um, and yeah, <clears throat> they've also got the, the bottom of the email wrong. Um, this isn't professional in any sense. You do get these a lot of the times. Um, some of these companies... I, I do know a couple of football teams. Uh, we've never done it, but I know a couple of football teams that have gone through the process of buying a couple of hundred of followers or trying to improve their numbers on Instagram or t uh, YouTube in particular to try to hit that monetization link. On YouTube, for example, you need 4,000 hours of your content watched as well as having 1,000 followers to be eligible to be reviewed for their monetization scheme so that you can start profiting for adverts on your YouTube channel. Um, the one thing that I would always say to people is that this type of organic growth is, well, it's not organic. This isn't organic growth. If you want to grow your football team, you have to be organic. Having a thousand defunct followers doesn't help you one bit at all. It never helps you. These people never like your stuff. They never view your content. They're just dummy accounts from a person that's got access to a thousand accounts and it's through a bot service as well. So you've got a fake business sending you fake followers that never interact. They're not real. They're not interested. Um, and also you're doing this at such a low amount of money as well. It's not even worth the risk of losing this small amount of money as well. So <laughs> if you want to naturally grow, the one thing that I've been trying to do for quite a long time is to grow our YouTube channel by developing the design, by improving my own content, hence the podcast coming out. I've improved the quality of our YouTube videos that are coming out as well. Um, in 2023, we got a custom video intro made. We're going to get a custom outro and another song made. So it's going to be even better as we go along down the line. This stuff is organic and what you need to do is be able to strike a chord with your audience naturally and all of this artificial nonsense that you receive from these type of emails do not get you anywhere if you want to grow naturally and you really want to evolve you have to trust the process that it's going to happen and that none of this will help um, these followers aren't guaranteed to stay also you're not actually you're not actually guaranteed to get these followers at all and even then you're going to order followers that aren't real followers. Um, sure, a business account might look at it and say, oh, look at this account. It's got 4,000, 5,000 followers. So surely their engagement is going to be correct. But if you get a sponsor and 4,000 of your 5,000 followers are inactive, Russian bots that are from the other side of the world and you have low engagement, your sponsor is going to go, well, four-fifths of your audience aren't actually engaging with your content they're not listening they're not doing anything so that's completely redundant but you told us outright that these people were part of your following and it was all organic so then it's mistrust between you and a potential sponsor or anybody that's trying to promote legitimately on a social media platform so this is a, a really murky area and something that i would never ever ever wish that anybody did um <laughs> in um in lockdown it, uh, just one final point on this. In lockdown, um, there were a lot of grassroots football teams doing polls, challenges, um, type of post to keep engagement up whilst people were sat at home bored for six, seven months at home whilst the government were in the UK fumbling the COVID strategy. And, um, you know, just uh, 
there were some accounts that were buying outright on these types of accounts um, polls. So there would be a poll between 32 teams and the winner would like get like some award or something um, or just like a mention online or just to engage with social media followers. And there were people buying five, six, seven hundred votes. And the previous poll had 50 votes. And then the next poll would have 6,000. It just is so clear as days. It was so fake. And a lot of these um, clubs were spending five, 10 quid of their money to win a, a completely redundant Instagram or Twitter poll. Um, so they don't do polls on Instagram, just something stupid on Twitter that they can go along. So, yeah, I mean, um, it happens and people do get bought into it this example of spam and all of this is is money that gets filtered through to people that use it for nefarious means so you know don't do it simple as that don't do it um you have to grow organically i'm all for growing organically and making sure that clubs are healthy in the correct way so um <clears throat> we're gonna add one in that i added in about five minutes before we started the podcast today because um, this is a very recent one. This is a case that's happened over the last day or so um, from a company called Jordan Wares. Again, that could be some person up in Cumbria in the UK. This could be somebody up in Newcastle. It could be somebody in Pakistan based on my previous um, uh, correspondence as well. We'll never know. But we're never going to know because this guy's not real. And let's go through, first of all, the image. He's got two soccer uniforms two football uniforms line up side by side to try to promote the fact that he's a real business um he has then gone through a series of emails or messages on my instagram service for our football team and i'll just read them out one two three four five six seven eight messages I, there's so many messages i've had to again close off the top of the messages and the bottom for the sake of getting in the screenshot um, so the message reads, we are manufacturer and exporter of sportswear, teamwear, streetwear, activewear and fashionwear, etc. We make all types of printing costumes. We may vendor for you. That was sent to me last Thursday. Then on Friday, the following morning, I received a message. Hello, sir. Dot, 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 dot. Do you want to make your own custom sports uniform? We are giving good quality and fast delivery. Question, uh, uh, full stop. Then, that wasn't enough. On Saturday, they decided to message me, hello. And then I didn't respond. And nearly 24 hours later on the dot, they said another message, more formal this time. Hello, sir. And then I didn't respond, naturally. And the following day, around 14 hours later, hello. And then another message one minute later. Hello, sir, dot, 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 dot. Do you want to make your own custom sports uniform? We are giving good quality and fast delivery. You should know that because they've just copied and pasted the same message from above. And then there were two or three more messages on Monday at six o'clock in the evening. Hello. And then hello, sir, again. Um, so this is um, another case of targeted harassment, another case of a, um, a scammer that's just trying to basically bait you and fish you into replying um these types of people are just trying to get your information and anyway there's no signs at all that this is legitimate he said hello about five times but not actually said anything um if you ever receive somebody that just pesters you online like this if you're a football team and you're looking for a new football kit if you ever see anything like this just ignore it delete it block it report it um there's nothing else you need to do um again all of the markers that I went through at the beginning, gen general salutations, they're there. There's no customization with words. There's no customer service. It's just a poorly worded, grammatical monstrosity. And this is something that largely uh, football clubs always receive. And once a week, twice a week, five times a week, ten times a week, I'm receiving messages that are like this where... I think that it's a player or a prospective player reaching out to me wanting to come train. No, it's some sports manufacturer that's non-existent from another part of the world that's got no sense of boundaries or respect that's messaging you to try to take some of your hard-earned money or fishing for some of your hard-earned details in life. And, um, you know, these people shouldn't be responded to. But I just thought this would be a good one because this is just an obscene amount of messages in such a short frame uh, time frame as well. 
And again, I'll mention it. Why would you ever, ever want to deal with somebody that is constantly doing this to you as well? This is the sense of urgency as well. These people try to get a sense of urgency. Hello, hello, hello. For over three or four days that their quality is so good that, that you have to respond to them and you've got to do everything on their speed and their time. That's not how buying and selling proper products works. So yeah, I just thought I would bring this one in as a last minute addition. So we're going to go into I, what I believe is our final example of spam. And you do receive a lot of um, graphics as well, or videos, or both. And we received two. One was from Barcelona Sports. Instead of saying anything, they sent me about 30 messages, all with their different products. And they were 10 second, 12 second videos of really poor plastic footballs printed in some dungeon in the Middle East somewhere. And it was awful. And there was um, there's photos of poor quality uh, inside workshops, inside um, these areas in life where you think, where on earth are they doing this? Um, and yeah, so basically um, this, uh, we don't have to go too much into it, but there's the other side of it. We've covered a lot of instances where people are sending out um, a lot of written text in big chunky form, grammatical errors. You also get the other side of it where you're going to get some uh, graphic designers sending you out some poor graphics um, on top of that as well um, with some poor artwork as well. So the one on the left is a little bit more pertinent. This one is from a company, company, company called Sportacus. Again, they've got an image on the left hand side that has an apparel of a pink kit. Um, one showing the front and one showing the back. That's another key sign that it's a red flag. It's another poor indicator of spam. Um, and this one was sent to me in April. Sportacus new and existing customers are welcome to take advantage of this offer. Only valid till the end of this month, never to come back again. Contact Sportacus London office at 0208. Not, um, a little bit of a burr goes through and then a mobile number as well. It then provides a graphic and um, before I get into the graphic, I will just mention some of the key indicators again. This is where they're trying to force you for your time. They're trying to rush you never to come back again, va offer valid until, but they've used the word. They, I'm quite a stickler for using the correct grammar and seeing till you until used as T.I. double L really does spark something in me. And it really is infuriating to read. Um, that alone would turn me off, just that one little thing. Um, but if that's not enough, um, the funniest thing is the model in this image that um, if you can see, there's the red, sh uh, the, the black and the red and the white hands on both of the images. But then there's a face of a rather dapper black individual. A black male and he they can't even and the photoshop here is so bad he hasn't even like integrated it into the head of the body or the um or within inside the tracksuit as well so you've got two contrasting skin colors um one black one white um the what you can just tell is that he's cut out a gentleman's head <clears throat> stuck it on the front made no effort to blend or anything at all um, he's then just put special offer three or four times on it, all inclusive, all inclusive what? Um, they don't say it. Ultra fit tracksuit. Again, you've got photos of the model again. All they've done is mess around with the colors. They put in some random wording and just put in some telephone numbers as well. This again for the eighth time, tenth time today is one million percent certified spam. You don't get these type of emails from legitimate businesses. And if there ever was a legitimate business that ever sent out something as awful to look at as this with this level of graphic design, which is a negative 10 out of 10, um, then shame on you. I can't imagine anybody would, though, because this is next level scamming, next level spam. It's just you can find most of these images online. Um, the model in this as well has probably been picked from something that's not sport related the fact that they can't get the skin color right is ridiculous in itself and just the final sign that it's a bit of spam as well um 
On top of that, this person or this account did actually send through another six or seven emails to me as well um, or and messages. And um, yeah, that's what they do. They spam, they spam, they spam until you as an individual decide to block them as well. Now that we've covered a series of examples of when spam and scammers are trying to get into your inboxes to take your personal information, what we're going to now cover is an example of where everything is legitimate and perfectly in bounds for a company. So um, compared to the stark contrast of what we've just gone through here on our latest slide, we have a email from one of the customer support team called Matthew at KitLocker. Um, I've mentioned KitLocker a few times since our beginning in 2019. We've had a club store via them and they've been nothing but great to us. They've made us some fantastic power up kits and some home and away shirts over the years. And the reason why we went with them was that originally we did a lot of ground work about finding the best type of supplier of football kit that we could and we narrowed it down to Kit Locker, and we were the ones that initiated the process with them. It wasn't them spamming us in an Instagram message or an email. Because of their reputation, we reached out to them, and we said, can we have a club store with you guys? And they were happy to help. So one of their um, representatives, Matthew, reached out to me. I had originally reached out to him because I'm looking for a gym apparel for the football team. So... Um, be it a football top or something that the guys could just wear that's very simple up the gym. And Matthew reached out to me and I asked originally if they had any uh, specific running or gym shirts that could be used as well. And Matthew reached out and said to me, Hi Rob, hope you had a good weekend. I'd be more than happy to help. Um, but we don't have specific items that are gym focused, but we have plenty that could be used in the gym. Our most common football top is the Park 7, which I believe could work for you, and it is very reasonably priced, unless you are wanting something a little bit more heavy duty, like the Nike 23 jersey, which may work for you. A bit more expensive option would be the Nike Academy Pro T. I have provided the logo design below to ensure it is still the same one. If you could let me know on the above as well as the preferred colours, I can draw up some potential artwork. If neither of the above work for you, please provide me with a price range and I can look at more alternatives. Many thanks, Matthew, Sales Support Executive at KitLocker. So let's run through some of the good indicators of this email. So there's a registered business telephone number as well. Um, the one thing is that KitLocker do and all these legitimate businesses, they have a physical address. If you're ever unsure about the legitimacy of a company, look at their address online. If they're in the UK, for example, KitLocker are based up in Sheffield. They'll have a Sheffield address. They'll have a business telephone number, which is important. They'll also have a personalized email address, a very nice um, uh, e email signature. And on top of that, they've got a... Um, a little bit of a blurb at the bottom as well, which goes into some information, which is all perfectly it fine. None of the spam emails we covered do this. So let's go through some of it. So they've got the telephone number. They've got the professional website with secured methods to pay as well. They've got a personalized email and a business email address, professional graphics and email signatures. There's good grammar used throughout Matthew. I love your company, but there's one grammatical error in there. So we'll get that fixed up for you next time. Um, but largely, there's been good grammar used throughout and people are allowed to make mistakes as well, which is completely natural and fine. What that also means is that he's written it. Uh, he's put this to me personally and he's looked into my inquiry from a personal point of view, looking at option specific things for me as well. Um, as well. And because it's come from this business email address, you can trust the links because um, when you hover over the links that are provided, they go straight to the, and you can even check on the hyperlink, they go straight to the club store or the um, kit locker item on their website as well. Also, on top of that, there's polite and good customer service skills as well. This isn't trained at a scam level. And all of the emails that we went through, hi there, hello, hello, sir, dot, 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 dot. This is actually personalized. It's welcoming. They're not forcing you to buy any products. They're not forcing you. They're not rushing you. They're not doing any of the indicators that we went through at the beginning. 
They've also included my own artwork as well, which I provided, which is um, a version of our club logo that was used on one of our goalkeeper tops as well. And yeah, like this is the type of email that you should be sent. But this is an email because of a reaction. These people will never reach out to you going, oh, hi, Rob, you haven't updated your club store in a year. Um, Would you like to upgrade your club store now with all of these new items? Oh, too late. We've already done it for you. How about if you buy within the next 24 hours, we're going to give you 70% off your order. That isn't what any type of company does. And they haven't ever done that. They <clears throat> professional companies obviously offer um, discounts. They offer sales. They have sale items. They've got a physical address. They're very punctual with their social media accounts. And yeah, this is all to do with the element. The final the final thing that is worth going over is also they've included their Trustpilot customer reviews as well. Um, I would say take Trustpilot with a pinch of salt sometimes because sometimes you um, scammers can manipulate Trustpilot. Though, if there's enough background with a company um, such as KitLocker and they've got the website, they've got the business email address, they've got the professional website, they've got the secured methods to pay online that protects the customer, there's a good chance that the trust pilot is going to be legitimate. And there's, I wouldn't ever, because they can't take any information from you, I would consider that to be legitimate as well. It also shows you the rating that they've got as well when you click onto it um, which can then go into some of the reviews um, typically when a company gets a really bad review on Trustpilot they'll reach out to the person directly to ask how they can help resolve the issue or they'll ask for some constructive feedback in the future as well which is exactly how companies develop and grow their customer base and their products and the way that they communicate as well so this email is a very stellar example of how businesses should operate if they are to contact you at all um but again i will just stress one more time this is purely because i have initiated an email and they've responded um and nobody would ever reach out to you kitlocker would never send me a private message on instagram with some information about a sale or a promo code or anything they just wouldn't do it these companies have so much other things going on um they're not there to be scammed they've got busy printing teams customer service teams they're there to protect you not to strong arm in uh, strong arm football clubs into buying football kit that they don't need they've already got enough business they don't need the extra business from randomly sending you messages online or random emails They've got people that send out automated marketing emails. They don't need the hassle of sending out messages online. So that's probably where I would, um, you know, finish this section of it and about being authentic because that's what really, really matters. Um, so let's go into another subject and it's slightly on topic. And we're going to go into, um, you know, we're talking now about remedies for, you know, scammers and spam. So why do shopping at trusted suppliers or locally make sense? So we're now talking about consumer habits, football teams about their considerations, if they're buying a football kit or any type of apparel, what should really, really go into it? So let's go through some of these bullet points. If a local sports manufacturer is trusted, you are supporting and sustaining local business, growing community links in the process. And KitLocker is one example. There are other really good um, club stores that, um, are slightly cheaper um, than Kit Locker. There's Pro Direct Soccer and there's a few others. Um, there's a local company called Core 37 in Newcastle who I've had a lot of interaction with. They're very lovely people, uh, legitimate business in the UK, send you out proper, um, uh, you know, uh, they, they, I asked for a sample of a tracksuit. They sent me a few examples in the post. Um, no fees asked. Obviously, I have to send it back at some point. But they had a proper customer service person reach out to me, um, proper emails, legitimate. I asked for a phone call. He picked up. He spoke to me in a professional way because I had some questions. But I only got to that point because they had a legitimate business. Um, and yeah, so there's a, a thing. There's a thing about for me about being sustainable in football and having the right measure to be able to have a positive impact on football. And if you're looking for somebody that 
is abroad or somebody that can make you things for cheap and you're there's we'll go into it but there's a lot of dark avenues that happens as a result of that in football but if you're going local it means that you're supporting english and british um suppliers and workers you're not exploiting staff from abroad so that's the main thing as well on top of that if you are buying from the uk or your own natural country you're also um, dealing with businesses that have trained staff they've got rules and conditions for their staff labor at these off-brand companies is often exploited um, we did mention, uh, well, I didn't mention, but some of these examples that we covered, covered countries such as Pakistan, such as India, um, potentially China. Again, we don't, we have no idea where these businesses are based, but if there's even a 1% chance that we're exploiting a child or a vulnerable member of society, then there's also that added mental weight that should you be doing this in the first place as well. Um, it means that the garments and what you're buying might not come from secure sources the supply chain might be money laundering you don't know you have no idea what is going on for any of this process so you just have to be very vigilant of the process um, and what these companies are offering as well um, so there's also the element that legitimate companies should pay tax and provide local communities and sport teams with funds through tax write-offs as well so, for example, if Kit Locker, uh, I'm going to use them because they're our kit supplier. If every person had the mentality of reaching out to a scammer or being um, coerced by these scammers to buy their kits abroad and then no money was coming into these companies in the UK, be it sports brands or anywhere else, and all of this money was going to these really seedy people from abroad that were going to be investing it into who knows what that is exploiting exploiting you who knows who that's also another ethical issue as well and you know the more that you support local businesses in general across the board the more that these companies are more inclined to do tax write-offs for football teams and community sports clubs and charities and trusts that improve society um, we received a grant from the Grenham Trust who were based in West Berkshire to eventually start a women's recreational football session and what they do is that all of the local businesses pool um, money that would be going for tax into um, the Grenham Trust and it's legal in the UK to be able to do tax write-offs and all of these companies instead of paying a lot of tax put the money directly back into the community and that's kind of how it should work in the UK and across the um, across the world. Um, I don't think it's personally worth spending all of this additional money on having or sorry, saving money on football kit for my own needs when it's A, going to exploit people, B, there's going to um, have increased um, environmental effects as well because you're shipping something from who knows where. Three, you're gambling with the quality and four, it's just super seedy and it's, you know, stuff like this isn't good or healthy for anybody in these processes um so yeah so there's nothing better than trying to help local communities because there are so many people that need help in the uk be it homeless people be it people that need sport facilities be it people that need help with their mental health i mean you know there's so many other facets of life that people need to protect and it starts by hopefully protecting local businesses and local people at the foremost instead of having your money scammed and taken by somebody across the world that's going to then give somebody 1p an hour to make a t-shirt for you it's just not worth the mental hassle um, <clears throat> and then the next point fourth in we've already mentioned it kind of but legitimate sports suppliers are more economically and environmentally sustainable in practice um, again when we're talking about shipping and growing businesses all businesses have to ship from somewhere which is absolutely fine um, but when you're shipping something from somewhere you don't know and you have no idea where something was made um, the quality and kind of the points that i just raised a minute ago you don't know what you're getting into what went into it if it's been economically and environmentally damaging for the planet as well you could be using subpar materials um, and for companies that do not keep 
charge of the environment as well. Companies in the UK are slowly getting there. They're not perfect, but a proper company like Kitlock, for example, has decided to um, put all of their packaging so it's recyclable. Um, they offer eco-friendly football kits as well. So what you're investing in for the development and the R&D for companies like this is more sustainable economic approaches that's going to help the environment in the future as well. Um, I would rather invest my time and resource in that rather than spending a little bit less money for, let's say, a guaranteed product from a scammer. Let's say it is legitimate for one minute and you do receive a football kit from abroad. Yeah, it's just not worth it. It just wouldn't be worth the extra hassle to first of all put yourself through that mental anguish every day of oh my god am i actually going to get a football kit let <laughs> alone to the whole process of you know is it real is it legitimate trusting these people that will spam you in that way sending you 10 messages a month it just isn't worth it um <clears throat> the next point the penultimate point the quality of the products uh, will be reputable and there are typically guarantees on returns or altering mistakes if they happen at any stage a company that sends you some football shirts from abroad um, for cheap, they're not going to do returns. They're not going to do anything. What they're probably going to do is ask you for more money to fix the mistake that they initially made. Um, legitimate UK businesses have return policies um, to make it easier for you as a consumer and a football club to be protected. Let's say they mess up your order. They haven't put the numbers on the back of the shirt. The embroidery is upside down. It This doesn't happen to be honest at all or, or too often so we're talking here about like the marginal errors that i've at least experienced anyway but if there is ever an error these companies that have the good customer service skills will happily help and the people that you don't know on the other side of the fence you don't know how they're going to react they may ask you for more money they may say no they may say no returns they may just stop messaging you. It depends on how these shady organizations want to operate, but there's no guarantees. You're not protected and you're not getting any type of customer service as well. And Penos and sorry, finally, um, the final point is your club shouldn't be seen to exploit others in the name of getting a cheaper football kit. I've already covered it. I think it's ethically wrong to support or promote anything that's going to damage the environment, damage people that are working um, in or exploiting child labor or underpaid workers or just illegitimate businesses that aren't paying taxes. They're not contributing to society as well. I know it's a bit of an ethical approach and some people might look at me and go, oh my God, Rob, shut up. What are you doing? Um, you know, we can do what we want, how we want, when we want. That's perfectly fine. You can have your opinion. I just have a moral compass where I don't want to see people exploited. I don't want to see um, <clears throat> anyone in any walk of life um, be kept at a certain level and have products uh, made cheaply and poorly in poor conditions, exploiting anybody. It just, it doesn't sit right with me. Um, so let's move swiftly on. So we've nattered on enough today and let's start to talk more constructively about what clubs can do in their positions to best protect themselves now and in the future. So the first thing that I would always recommend clubs do is that they do their research before making any purchase, especially when expensive football kit and equipment is involved. Google searches are your friend. So if you're ever in the market for a football kit or football equipment, you have every right to look online and have a look at the different alternatives that are there for you. Let's say you want to buy some footballs and the first place you go is Amazon and Amazon are ridiculously charging 40, 50 quid for a football. It means that there's an Amazon seller that thinks that you as a consumer is lazy. You have every right to go and find a cheaper alternative online. Um, and when it comes to it, typically you'll be able to notice the key indicators for a store that is legitimate or not um, for footballs for example i use a store called new it's or pro direct or even kit locker i just use the two or three um, i always just search though between three or four websites that are well trusted they've got good customer reviews they've got legitimate business addresses and emails that you can contact a proper customer support and you know everything that we've covered that has secure payments we tend to go for as well um, but yeah just do your research um, and then you'll completely avoid the need to ever look at these scam emails and go oh my god that might be the way for me hmm. 
I'm starting to lose my voice now. So um, let's go into a few of the other points. If in doubt, ask a member of your club, friends or family to review any suspicious information. Um, you, a football club, will not be alone in running some of the details of your club. Um, if you're an older member of society of a, or a football club or young and you don't quite understand what you're looking at, there are other people in your football club that will damn well know if something is scam or not. So it's always just good to pass something over to somebody. Never make the decision by yourself, especially when it comes to expensive pieces of equipment. Um, and then um, it's always good to review any emails or you get and check against all spam and scam indicators. So basically, just similar to what we did um, when we were running through some of the identifiers about what makes a good or a bad email, it's just so crystal clear the differences between an email from Kit Locker or an email from Z Apparel in God knows how land or, you know, just it just makes such a big difference. There are just some easy key indicators that at the beginning here are just going to help you in the long run if you never know if anything's real or not. There's also the other element, and I've kind of already stated it a few times, report and block any scam accounts or scammers that you know. It just helps clean up social media. It helps clean up grassroots football. You're helping people that are going to be exploited, um, especially when children are involved. And football clubs nowadays are so hot on safeguarding. All clubs need a safeguarding officer. Make sure that your club's protected in this one little particular area as well. It just goes a long way. Um, especially if you're running a social media account and um, you run an underage team where you've got people who aren't classed as adults, the last thing you need them to be exposed to is a lot of spam um, and you as a club shouldn't be um, using their money for these type of particular schemes as well. It's just not acceptable and you just need to be think twice before you get involved with any of those people. Um, so, there's also the element here, another moral quandary from me, but um, I believe that we should all think about being sustainable and ethical in an environmentally conscious world. Um, it's going to only become more of an issue as we move on. Sustainable football kits are going to be the way of the future. Eco football kits, recycled kits. Um, Reading, where I'm based, uh, had a football kit last year that highlighted the temperature in the county. Um, from the 50s up until now, and they showed the uh, on, across the arm here, they had a increasing red line of the local temperatures each year on year. So there's more of a social conscious awareness now of football kits, of betting partners, of sponsors, of anything potentially unethical as well. And when it comes to buying football kit, being ethical means just protecting people that aren't going to be exploited in the workplace. Um, using poor garments from abroad or just basically just making sure that you're going for a company that treats people fairly with respect, pays them and they do a good job. There's nothing else to really to consider. And lastly, um, I constantly mention this in my podcast and I think that this is a, a constant thing that you should always do. If you're alone and you don't have a lot of support, if you ever, ever, ever need support, your local county FA will come read between the lines about most things and they are your number one friend. They're there to support you. They're there to help you grow. They help you for, um, for you to maintain, to develop. And also they can point out these scams. They can recommend to you certain vendors as well or certain suppliers if, they, if you need something such as a medical kit. Uh, the County FA in Berkshire, the Bucks and Bucks FA, they have a um, an arrangement with a company called Discount Football Kits. They offer very good medical kits at a very good discounted cost for football clubs. So ele little elements like that make such a big difference and they can kind of lean you away from making those decisions if you're ever in a predicament of being scammed. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to move on to advice about starting your own football club now because um, you know, a lot of my podcast is aimed at people that want to start a football team. They don't know what they're doing. They want advice on how to get from point A to point B to point C to the point where they're playing football regularly. They understand the environment. They understand the culture. Um, and yeah, so let's just go into some of these points here. So if you're running a football club, you need to understand your budget and how much football costs to get up and running. Alongside of purchases such as kit and other equipment, you must pay for insurance fees for players and the cups, uh, medical kits, league and cup entrance, 
organize training events, pay referees and cover ad hoc costs as well. So basically running a football team isn't cheap. You need to have a budget. You need to be able to stick to a budget. You need to be able to understand how much you're going to have to uh, spend on, say, a football kit or footballs, um, league fees, yellow cards, red cards. All of these things play a big factor on your football team as well. So you need to understand your budget first and foremost. The only reason we've got Nike kits is that um, we have the trusted vendor in Kit Locker. And on top of that, at the time of starting the football club, I had um, just been made redundant from a company. So I had some spare money that I could basically invest to our initial seed for the team as well. But if you don't have those funds, you need to really look at your own budget, look at alternatives that you have when starting a football team as well. Um, so the next point is you can always ask the county FA and other trusted clubs for help. Most club organisers are in the same boat and want to help. The amount of conversations I have with people that are club secretaries at other football teams or they run a league or they're involved in the Barks and Bucks FA, for example, or a county FA equivalent across the board. Everybody that at an organisational level largely wants to help nobody wants to see each other struggle we are a very close-knit community there's nothing more uh what's the best way of putting this there in grassroots football you spend a lot of time volunteering it's all on your own back you spend a lot of time doing it sometimes you get nothing in return sometimes you get everything in return sometimes you're fighting the good fight and you're losing the good fight but sometimes you're winning it as well and these people at your level, club secretaries, club managers, coaches, finance secretaries, welfare officers, people that put in a lot of time and effort know of the struggle and they're going to want to help you because they don't want to they don't want to have you go through the same experiences they did. And whenever somebody asks me about this exact same issue, uh, whether it be about scams or buying football care, I happily offer my advice. So other football clubs and their other people in the community will always help you if you're ever stuck. Never feel if you get a scam or a bit of spam and you're backed into a corner, never feel like that's the only option. There are so many people in a supportive community, whether it be in your local county FA or through people like me or other people that will happily help you no matter the cost. Um, and lastly, um, do your research on suppliers of football equipment and create a reputable list that covers the core brand of items. So there's just a few product suppliers that I've listed. Amazon, Newitz, ProDirect Soccer, Kit Locker, for examples. Um, the, you just need to have a very small list of places where you can buy items, um, find promo codes, understand that, you know, you want, you need to keep everything tightly in-house you shouldn't overcomplicate it and buy your t-shirts from there your shorts from there try to keep everything as comfortable and as easy as possible for you running a football club and being involved at this level you do a lot you're constantly out and about thinking mental strain physical strain running a football team takes a lot of time and effort um, uh, having a, a club store having elements of football kit should be an easy part of the process for you so yeah don't overcomplicate it don't do too many things in two different don't put your fingers in too many pies basically um and keep everything nice and simple that's probably my bit of sage advice um <clears throat> and finally i did say at the beginning that we were going to cover some of the golden rules to cover as well um sam our club chairman has got involved with some of these golden rules um because we go through these processes together and we just thought to end we'd impart some important information on to you to basically follow in the process of scams so that you are best kept safe. Number one, there are some really good websites out there that you can check if a website or a social media account is legitimate or not. Um, if you go to scamadvisor.com, uh, the link is there and we've also put it in the description below. They can pretty easily find out if your company is legitimate, if there's nothing about the company, if it's completely legit and there's nothing to be worried about. Um, there are loads of websites out there that can really help you protect yourself. So if you're ever encroached by a website that wants to sell you merchandise, you can pretty easily tell if they're legitimate or not. Um, secondly, if you're ever buying small club purchases, such as sock tape, cones, bibs, pegs for your goal nets if you need to peg in anything to the ground on game days, any small tiny purchases, we would say use a single supplier. Um, for us and for our example, we use Amazon when we buy all of our 
little different elements. Our players are constantly running out of sock tape and they come to games without it. So we always have some on supply. Um, goal, we always have to peg in the goals to the ground for our home games and we get them off Amazon as well. Um, we get bibs and combs and just all of these tiny little bits that we buy. So we buy all of the ad hoc um, small purchases on one particular website. There's a few others, but you can do research about that as well. And we're not saying that Amazon's the right place to go. We're just saying it's one of the places to go. But largely, it's a golden rule um, for us. We only ever do one thing with small club purchases, and we recommend that clubs do the same as well. Thirdly, if it's too good to be true, it usually is. Um, if somebody's offering you 60% off and they're offering you track suits at £20, um, which is the top and the bottoms, it's just not a thing it's just not a thing these people and these scammers will just say anything um for you they'll say okay if we can get a tracksuit down to 15 quid per player or 12 pound 49 dollars usd um, then we can get 40 lots of that amount out of this player depending on how many people they have in the football team as well because we're still talking about large sums of money if it's largely too good to be true, it is. The I went through some advice earlier about the process about buying a football kit. It doesn't take five minutes to get anything ordered. You can't do fast express delivery on something good. The football kit in the photo and the football kits behind me on our podcast today, they, they take time. They, you have to go through curation with designers. They've got to design the kit. They've got to print the kit. They've got to make sure that you're in the right order in the queue because people are before you. It's a long process. Football kits largely take three to four to five weeks nowadays to get sent out because there's so much administration. There's a lot more bespoke nature of the kits now as well. In the red um, photo, you can see that our red kit has a design where you've got um, circular, uh, circular balls that go all the way up and they slowly fade out to the top. Um, that had to be designed. That had to be finalize we had to change the color of it that you're constantly going back and forth between a social media team or a marketing team or a sales team or any type of team that's trying to get the right product for you these things don't happen in five minutes um also the one thing that i would recommend is if you understand how to look at good and bad graphic design online you can easily tell we used the example earlier of the gentleman with the white hands and the black face um with one of the most poorly colored in jackets you've ever seen i mean that's a big difference compared to what you would get from a legitimate company so you just have to make sure that you just make sure that you just stay to repre uh, to re <laughs> to really good sellers online and stick away from these guys online so <clears throat> when purchasing anything your club needs to be proactive not reactive i.e. not changing course if you receive spam. Sam was the person that said this to me and I've highlighted it. I've put it in italics as well. It's such an important phrase. You need to be proactive, not reactive. You do the research. You do the groundwork. You find the right suppliers for you. You find the right cost. You understand your needs. If you're reactive and somebody comes in with a better offer, um, the too good to be true mentality and you're reactive and you change your goalpost depending on what a scammer or somebody that's trying to get easy money out of you for a substandard product, that is the number one biggest red flag for me when it comes to all of what we've talked about today with scams. You need to be the one that has the, the forethought and the process, not them. You're in control of your football club. You're in control of your finances. You're in control of what you buy. Anything else and any deviation from that you have to ignore report block spam simple as that get rid of everything else that you don't need keep to the basics you're in control just remember that as a football club you are never not in control of your own destiny um be if players are being horrible to you if suppliers are giving you the runabout if if you're being charged too much you're in control about everything you do so if anybody tries to come in and say we can do this for you and that for you ignore them they're not there you know what's right for your football team so, uh, last few points. Never buy anything when being approached. You must take initiative. It's very similar to above about being proactive and reactive. If anybody ever reaches out to you online, and we've already covered this, if Kit Locker ever reached out to me on social media to say, oh, yeah, can you buy some football kit, please? Then, then you know it's a scam. 
companies that are uh, that are legitimate never do this. They never do it ever, ever, ever. Uh, they may send out marketing emails, that's fine, but they're never going to reach out to you, spamming you as an individual for money. They've got other things on their mind. Um, that's why they're not scammers, because these scammers only are interested in one thing, getting personal information, getting easy money, and then deleting their accounts and being gone in the winds. They're not there to stay for a good a long time. They're there for a good time for their own purposes. So just be very cognizant of that. Um, but ultimately, legitimate companies have secure methods to pay. So never fall for the trap to bank transfer over funds. Um, if you go on to any website nowadays that's a legitimate business, there are secured methods to pay, um, be it Klarna, Stripe, um, through PayPal or anywhere. These companies have secure methods for you to purchase products online. Um, these other companies online, I know that I don't have an example of it, but if you were to go through the process of saying, yes, I would like to purchase from you, they would send you some bank account details to send over the funds to. And then as soon as you send over the money, um, they'll give you um, a shipping date and then they'll, they'll give you some uh, bogus designs and they'll lead you along for two weeks until they can get their money out of um, wherever it ended up and into the hands of somebody else. The money usually moves about. Um, if you know anything about crypto scams or money scams or just anything about scammers the money never stays in one place for too long because typically there are people in life that are trying to safeguard and try to find out the steps about where the money goes so this money can move from pot a to pot p b to c to d to e to f very quickly and as soon as that process is done you'll never hear from them again um, the same happens in my professional life in pensions as well they just move the money that's all that they do um so just make sure that these companies have the safe and secure payment methods as well. Bank transfers are, are a big no-no for me. Um, and lastly, the biggest one is, and this is just like the most sage advice possible, similar to if your bank's been scammed or if you've been scammed, um, the only thing to do, the first thing to do is to contact the bank, get a fraud case up and running, get it investigated, make sure that people professionally are investigating this if you're ever scammed and let's say you are scammed in this instance and you've bought some football kit and it turns out you've been scammed and your football community clubs had 600 700 pounds taken out of this account you have to reach out to your bank immediately they're probably the first people you should contact um, you need to supply evidence you need to supply anything that can help them um, you can't delete any messages you've got to keep everything because there's crucial to you getting your money back um, banks can largely have insurance money to help f uh, football clubs or individuals out in case they've ever been legitimately scammed so they it, there is a fallback in case this ever happens hope to god fingers crossed this has never happened to anybody but i know that it has um, and the first advice is to go to your bank get an investigation open with the fraud department and then go from there they'll be your best friend until well unless they, they're unable to get your money back but it's the first step in, in recovering in case this incident happens but largely i would say keep these golden rules safe they're very very good we followed these to the t now for years we've never had any issues it's kept our club bank account safe it means that we're shopping and securing ourselves in more local parameters we don't um, abuse anybody from abroad with local labor laws it's it's very nice we're you know we're trying our best to do the right things and just living by a couple of ethoses and a couple of golden rules it really does make a difference when it comes to understanding and identifying people that are scamming you or trying to scam you or sending you spam constantly and religiously for years and years and years to wrap up i hope that everybody at home has enjoyed what has been our second presentation today um, on the hype train podcast I think that it's imperative that I cover a lot of these subject matters as the podcast goes along. So we're going to be doing a lot more of these. If anybody has any recommendations for me that they would like to cover in depth in a long form podcast, I'm happy to do the groundwork. 
and to go into detail about other areas of grassroots football as well. Um, largely, I hope that the first two have been enjoyable, they've been informative, and mostly they've been able to help individuals at my level to try to protect themselves in terms of scams and identifications today and all of these types of things that happen to football clubs where their money's at risk or at danger. I hope that some of these key golden rules, some of these indicators and markers and examples um, have gone a long way to helping your club stay safe in an environment in a world where scams are rising day by day. There seems to be more and more and more that clubs need to do to protect themselves. And if any club in your position has ever fallen victim to this, I would love to hear from you. If you're a football club that wants to know how to best protect itself, I'm happy to give my sage advice to you in a private matter. So just get in contact with us with our contact details below. Um, in addition to that, um, next will be our 10th edition of the podcast and we're going to be having an interview with Hounslow Wolves' very own Nikhil Garg. Nikhil is a fantastic human being. He was with me at Hype Train for a year and he's now living the life out in Dubai whilst helping to run out Hounslow in London. So we're going to be talking to Nikhil about all things Hounslow, a lot about organisation and structure at football clubs as well. It's going to be another good podcast and it's going to be good to finally have the podcast up to a 10th edition. Getting out of these single digits is going to be fantastic. Apart from that, don't forget to share this video, to give this a like. We're on the road to a thousand followers on YouTube. As I mentioned earlier, we're looking for organic growth and I would love for you to be part of that journey aboard the hype train as well. We're going to have lots more match highlights, lots more on the podcast upcoming. And of course, as ever, until next time, believe the hype.